Hello, my name is Victoria Ruff, and for my final research presentation, I have decided to study Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni. That's an impressive name, isn't it? Well, the artist himself is even more impressive. Michelangelo is best known for David and the Sistine Chapel, and he, is, he was pretty well known for the Torment of St. Anthony back in the day. We don't know about it as much today, but we'll look at it anyway. My argument is that Michelangelo was an incredibly gifted artist that was known for his legendary moodiness and his unique representation of male and female figures in both his sculpture and his painting. Now, in order to understand Michelangelo's works, it's probably best we understand the man himself first. So, let's take a look. Michelangelo was born in Caprice, Tuscany on March 6, 1475. He began training under an artist named Ghirlandaio at 13 years old after his parents tried to put him in a regular school and he preferred watching the artists instead. So they gave up and apprenticed him to Ghirlandaio, where he studied painting, drawing, all that jazz. Eventually, more or less a year later, he moved into the palace of Lorenzo the Magnificent of the Medici family. It is there that he studied sculpture mostly Greek and Roman sculpture that the Medici had on hand. He also met several current politicians, philosophers, and artists. In order to get a better understanding of his craft, he actually studied human corpses, real corpses. He did have approval from the Vatican, but yeah, he was studying corpses. Something that speaks to how incredible an artist he is, is that two biographies of him were published during his lifetime. Neither of them were autobiographies, and yes, they are complete, minus the death part. Now, Michelangelo was a high Renaissance artist, and his preferred medium was marble, because he thought of himself as a sculptor. This is not to say that Michelangelo only did sculpture. He would have liked to, I imagine, but he was also an accomplished painter, so he did several things in that as well. Let's take a look at David. David is a very impressive statue. It is made of Carrera marble, and he stands at 17 feet tall. It took three years to make him, and he weighs over six tons. Something unusual about David is that even though Michelangelo studied Greek and Roman figurative sculpture, he's not in the contrapposto pose, which speaks to, his, which speaks to the study of later Greek and Roman figurative sculpture. An interesting thing especially considering the dynamic pose that David is currently positioned in. Something that shows Michelangelo's own take on David is that David isn't victorious or holding a severed giant's head. He's pensive. He's looking forward. He's not done yet. And that's something unusual to Michelangelo's approach to David. David was completed in 1504, and originally they were going to plop him on the roof, but unless ye old helicopter makes an appearance, they can't get him up there. And even if they had somehow managed to get David on the roof, he probably would have fallen through anyway. So David remained on the ground, and his 17-foot height came to represent David's, stat David's importance as a biblical character rather than being a practical thing that allowed him to be seen from a rooftop. Next we have the Sistine Chapel ceiling. The Sistine Chapel is arguably Michelangelo's most known work by everyone. Everyone's heard of the Sistine Chapel, everyone knows who painted it. It's a fresco that, all in all, is about 133 feet by 46 feet. It took about four years to paint, with assistance. It was commissioned by Pope Julius II, and completed in 1512. There's an incredible amount of figures in this work. Now, the amount of figures would have posed a problem for a lesser artist, because the Sistine Chapel ceiling is a collection of several different scenes from Genesis, and they're all very different. They depict different things, they have different people, and they're even at different times of the day or in different locations. Michelangelo faced a problem, how to make it one work of art. Something, there are a couple things that he did, but for the, the most important one to me is, of course, the anatomical structure of his figures. Even the men, the women, the demons, the angels, they all look relatively similar. They follow the same pattern, the same bulging flesh, the same colors, and pretty much the same hair, too. This is how Michelangelo created unity. 
He used the same figure, just in different positions, with different clothing, different hair. And that's how he created the unity needed for the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Of course, the lines, the triangles, the rectangles, all of that gave it structure. But what unified it was the humans. The Torment of St. Anthony The Torment of St. Anthony, Anthony is one of the few early works we have from Michelangelo. Now, it's an oil and tempera on panel, which tells you right off the bat how old it is, because Michelangelo would not have willingly done something that was not sculpture. The size is actually pretty small compared to what we've looked at so far. It's 18 and a half inches by 13 and a quarter inches, and took him less than a year to paint. Its significance comes from the fact that he painted it at about 12 to 13 years old, making it completed in about 1487 to 1488. But this piece of art tells us more about Michelangelo than I think the Sistine Chapel does, because in this piece of art, you can see several of the principles of design and how Michelangelo understood them and used them. You can see how he used different colors to emphasize the saint and the demons and subordinate the stuff in the back. He used darker colors to show the evil of them. He used spikes to show that there were demons. He also used the rocks in the bottom left corner to work against the wings in the top right. He created balance and unity in this piece in ways that I wouldn't have been able to even now. Michelangelo had an incredible understanding of how to use color, dynamic shapes, motion, light, texture, to create exactly what he was looking for. This piece is part of why the Medici family invited him in the first place, so it's fairly important to Michelangelo's journey. In conclusion, Michelangelo worked in several mediums, including marble, fresco, and oil. Michelangelo had an incredible understanding of human anatomy that makes itself known in almost all of his works. Michelangelo was reluctant to work on anything other than sculpture. Once again, he saw himself as a sculptor. He did not like painting. And the only reason he did the Sistine Chapel was because the Pope was the Pope that you do not mess with. He was nicknamed the Terrible Pope. Michelangelo used his study of human corpses to give a life to his paintings and his sculptures that no other artist at that time had. And this skill is what makes him renowned to us, and even back then. Now, I won't say that you should study corpses to reach Michelangelo's level, but you can definitely learn from Michelangelo himself. That's all from me. Thank you very much.